Well, hi there, folks. In this particular video, we're going to be combining some CSVs, uh, which is everybody's favorite activity, but we're going to do something special. We're, we're going to combine those CS CSVs, but when we do, we're going to make sure that we keep the name of each CSV. So every single row will have a column that says, hey, what CSV did this particular row come from? So let's go ahead and get started with that. I'm going to head up here to Home. I'm going to go to Edit Queries. Right. I've already got this finished, but we're going to start over as if we're starting from scratch. I'm going to hit New Source. Well, actually, I'm going to hit Underneath New Source, the little button down there. I'm going to go to More. And I want to import an entire folder, so I'm going to double-click on it. Power Query says, hey, what folder do you want to import? Well, I'm just going to... Oh, I did that a little fast. I'm going to hit Browse. I'm going to scroll down, find the data that has the, or the folder that has the data in it, click on it, and hit OK, and hit OK again. Okay, let me uh, shrink this here. Uh, here we've got this dialog box that says, hey, do you want to uh, forget what we were doing? No, we don't want to do that. Do you want to combine and edit it? Well, you might think that you want to hit that, but we're going to have to do, we're going to have to do this um, combination or this combining by hand. So just don't hit the uh, combine and edit, just hit regular edit. So we are now presented with a table that has one row for each file in our folder. The only two things we actually care about is the content, which is you could think of this as like as the files, and the name, which is the thing that we want to keep. So we're going to left click on content right in the middle of the header, and control click on name right in the middle, not here, not here, but here. And we're going to uh, right click and hit remove other columns, so we don't care about those. Okay, so uh, what we want to do next is we're going to write a custom column that's going to convert this binary to a table, uh, but that's, that's you know, that can be kind of involved. Some of the code is not immediately apparent, so we're going to have Power Query do the hard work for us. So I'm going to uh, right-click here on da the data query, and I'm going to hit Duplicate. And this new, uh, new query, I'm just going to write uh, lazy way to get M code. You can call it whatever you want to. Uh, but this is the lazy way to get M code, which is often the best way to get M code. So we want to convert this binary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, left click directly on the hyperlink looking thing. Wait till I get the glove, right? And click on it. Okay, and it adds a bunch of code here. So it goes and gets that one CSV, but we don't want one CSV, we want several CSVs. So we're going to go back up the chain of applied steps until we get to this content, oh, I'm sorry, imported CSV is a step that we want to, right? So this particular step takes a binary and returns a table, which is exactly what we want. So we're going to twirl open the M code. If you can hear something, that is the moving, uh, the, uh, what do you call it, self-storage place of me. Somebody's moving stuff up there. Okay, so I'm going to go, if you can't see this, go to view and make sure that formula bar is checked. Oh, let's see. Make sure that formula bar is checked. You're going to need that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to take this code, left click there, and we're going to copy the whole thing, right? Control C to copy it. This is the code that's going to convert a binary to a uh, table. So go back to our regular query, our data query. Go to add column. Go to add custom column. And we're going to change the name here to raw, whatever you want to call it. It's just fine. It's the raw conversion. And hit Control V to paste it. Well, we actually don't need two uh, equal signs, so go ahead and delete the first equal sign and probably delete that space. Okay, so uh, CSV document, so it's going to convert the content. Well, uh, this is actually going to convert the step before in the previous query. We want to convert one by one each item in the content row, okay? And because of that, we're going to go ahead and just select all this, select the first argument and hit delete, and just double click on content. So notice it's got the square brackets around it. Now, one by one, we're going to convert each one of these CSVs. Okay, hit OK. Boom. Okay, so before, if I click off to the, the right in this white space here, I can see this is a binary, and this is the converted binary. It's been converted into a table. Okay. So uh, if, you, if, you, if you notice, whenever you import CSVs, one of the first things you have to do is promote headers. So let's go ahead and do that. This first row should actually be the headers. So store and sales should be the names of the columns. That's easy. Go to custom column. And I'm, I'm just going to type in with headers is the name. Again, whatever you want is just fine. We're going to use the table.promoteheaders function. 
promote headers, open parentheses, and just double click on raw. So each one of those raw tables, we're going to take it and promote the headers. Okay, click OK. And now don't click on the actual table itself. Just click off here to the uh, in the white space to the right. Now the columns are here up in the headers where they should be. There's before and after. Ah, uh, much nicer. Okay, so the only things we really need now are these tables and the name of the CSVs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, left click on name and then control left click on with headers, right click and hit remove other columns. Okay, so whenever I expand a table, what's going to happen is this, this row is basically going to get added to every single, this value is going to get added to every single row in this table, right? So right now this table has, you know, these items in it. It's going to have a, a new column called name, and it's just going to have what CSV it came from. So let's, in fact, before we add this, before we do this, let's, uh, I'm going to right click on this folder and I'm going to rename it. Down here is, at the bottom is rename. And I'm just going to rename this source CSV, just to be clear what it is. Okay, so now I can go ahead and just click the bunny ears to expand, and it's going to say, do you want to use the original column name as prefix? As always, I uncheck that unless I've got a very good reason, and I click OK. Boom, and there I go. Now I've got, uh, admittedly, some very small CSVs, but I've expanded them, and alongside that, for every single row in my new master table, I've got the source CSV that it came from. Okay, well, I do hope that was helpful, and I will see you next video. Hey there, I just realized I forgot one fairly important part. It won't break, uh, it won't break the solution, but it's going to leave um, some junk in there that we don't need. Hey, this code that we used to get the, uh, the lazy way to get that M code, we don't need this. Let's get rid of it. So there's two ways to sort of uh, get rid of it as far as your model is concerned. You could right click on it and uncheck enable load. And what that means is that it stays in Power Query, uh, but when you go ahead and hit, you know, um, well, not close return, what do you call this thing? This button that I hit nine times a day. Close and apply. When you hit close and apply, uh, it won't actually apply it to the model. It, it, the logic will stay here in Power Query, but it will never use this to go return data to the model. So that's one way to do it. And notice that uh, sort of grayed out a little bit. Uh, but, you know, we don't even really care about keeping this. So I'm just going to right click on it and hit delete. Yeah, and hit delete again. That way we don't have a bunch of junk that really isn't part of um, our model floating around in our Power BI file. Okay, thanks for watching.